So once we've got our telescope, we need to actually work out what we're going to put at the end of it. Obviously the simplest thing we can put at the end of it is our eye, but not many astronomers really look through telescopes anymore. So uh, we're going to understand why that is, the limitations of the human eye as a detector. We're going to try and look at how the eye was replaced and understand this term time integration. And then we're going to talk about CCDs and why they are better than using your own eyes to look at things with. So if you think about looking at something through your eye, what are the problems with that? Well, the first one is that your brain filters out a lot of the information that comes to it, so it's used to trying to take away all the kind of extra information you don't need in the daylight. It's not really very well adapted to working at night time. Um, and if you go out from a fairly bright room into a nighttime environment, it takes about 20 or 30 minutes. Obviously, the size of the pupil adjusts quite quickly, but your brain has to sort of take away filters it uses in the nervous system in order to detect low levels of light. Second problem is a lot of the light doesn't actually reach your retina anyway because um, a lot of the photons get absorbed on the way through. And then probably most crucially to understand, there's a certain rate of photons hitting cells beyond which they don't get to actually send a nerve signal to the brain which is detected. So you need about 50 photons a second or 5 photons every 0.1 seconds in order to actually hit one nerve to try to get a response to the brain. Okay, the important conclusion from all this is that your eye is only about 1 or 2% efficient. What that means is only about one photon in 100 will actually cause any signal at all to reach your brain so your brain can actually see that as a source of light. So as soon as it was possible, astronomers moved away from actually using their own eyes to look at things and the first step they did was to introduce photography. So this is really sort of 1920s by which time photography has got fairly good and we've got fairly sensitive photographic plates and the key advantage of photography is this idea of time integration. So we said with the eye it matters how many photons are hitting it per second. Well that's not true with a photographic film, a, ne um, a negative, because what happens is it just depends on the total number of photons that hit the um, film. So as long as you can track your telescope, so it's always looking at the same point in the sky, it doesn't matter, obviously you're limited to uh, the amount of time you can actually track something for, and that certainly can't be more than the length of the night time. It does mean that you can expose that film for hours, whereas with your eye you're looking at a certain number of photons per second. The other advantage of photography, obviously, is the permanent record. Um, but you don't end up with a much better quantum efficiency. You're still only in a few percent quantum efficiency. Okay, You just do have this time integration advantage. But you can see a little example of an advantage here where you can take two photographs at two different nights of the same bit of sky. You'll notice this one's a little bit darker because the exposure's a bit longer. But the crucial difference to notice here is this point here, which doesn't exist at all down here. And that's because this was a photograph from 1975. Um, same bit of sky on two successive nights um, and this was actually a supernova that would have been very difficult to spot without photographic plates to study. Okay but this all got replaced going through the 80s and into the 90s with charge coupled devices which were um, developed first by astronomers but now are used in all dig kind of digital um, photography so your um, camera in your mobile phone that's got a CCD in it, that's how it manages to take digital images. Um, you don't need to know much about the detail about this, the crucial thing to know is this number here. The quantum efficiency goes from a few percent to over 70 percent. Just in simple terms, you've got different layers, you've got lots of pixels across the cell. This is when you buy a camera and it tells you how many megapixels. Each pixel is a little cell, the more the smaller you can make these pixels, the better the um, resolution of your camera is going to be. Um, you have a couple of semiconducting layers, you have electrons in the top layer, the photons come along, a photon hits an electron and knocks it into the lower layer. Okay, you leave that for however long you want to expose it to. Again, you've still got this time integration advantage, so you can leave it running for a long time. Eventually you end up with a certain number of photons in the bottom, and you can turn that into an image. So, if there's lots of photons, that means there's lots of light and you get a light patch or a darker patch. The advantage of CCDs is they've got a very high range of sensitivities. If you ever see an optical photo, 
it's very difficult to get the brightest things and the dimmest things without either overexposing the brightest things or losing the dimmest things altogether. CCTVs can have huge different ranges between the brightest and dimmest. The brightest things can be a million times brighter than the dimmest things and you'll still be able to see both in the image. Okay, it's electrical, so obviously that's got a lot of advantages. You wouldn't have to have sat looking at those plates. You could have just put that information into a computer and it would have pointed out the supernova for you. And also CCDs can go way beyond the visible spectrum. A um, simple example of this you might have seen is to point a remote control at the mobile phone camera and see if you can actually see the um, infrared radiation which is produced actually shines up as visible light when you look at it with the camera. So just to summarise the advantages, firstly time integration, that's true for photography and CCDs, you can look for a long time and add all the total light together. Secondly, a higher quantum efficiency, we're going from 1 or 2% to about 70 or 80% now in quantum efficiency. Uh, thirdly, you can put the image straight into a computer, which is obviously very important with the huge amount of information that astronomers get these days. And you've got a much ra bigger range of sensitivity, so that to be able to see very bright things, but also still spot dim things next to them, that's much easier with CCTs. Um, and also you can detect, it says light here, but radiation outside the visible part of the spectrum.